sure. After I graduated from middle school, I took the test to attend the art university. It is now called the China Academy of Art, but back then it was called Zhejiang Academy of Fine Arts. I applied for two majors, oil painting and the other was sculpture. The school placed me into the sculpture major, so I began to study the art of sculpture. When I was in the fourth grade, the art teacher asked our class to make a Chinese traditional drawing, but she gave us bond paper. It is difficult to create Chinese traditional drawings with bond paper, so I soaked the paper in water for a little while. After it was half dried, I began to draw. I remember that I drew a pine tree. The teacher thought that it was pretty good. She entered my drawing into a local exhibition. I got an award. Because of that, my teacher introduced me to her teacher, a famous art master, Mr. Zijian Shen. I became Mr. Shen's last student. Talking about art, to tell you the truth, I liked it since I was little, but it was only a hobby. It wasn't until I graduated from the university that I realized, oh, art is very important. I studied art history and came to understand that the development of human civilization is related to the development of art. So I wanted to use the art in a special way that would have a positive effect on human civilization. I started making sculptures of historical figures, historical allusions, and especially some stories about different gods and Buddhas. I made a lot of Buddha sculptures. At that time, I thought, I want to use art to lead people into a much better future. Chinese traditional paintings are full of Chinese people's special characteristics and inner meanings. The Chinese 5,000 years of history and artistic interpretation. It is an expression of Confucianism. Therefore, Chinese paintings have more emphasis on mountains and rivers, women, and many drawings of Buddha. So drawing the gods and Buddha expresses the concept of heaven and humans' harmony. One of the most important differences between Chinese painting and Western painting is that Chinese paintings depend very much on the lines Drawing a line has many requirements. First, it must be very smooth. Second, a line should express softness and hardness. And finally, the darkness and depth of the colors. It is always better to draw as shallow as possible. The more shallow, the more difficult it is to draw. But the conception is higher. Chinese painting especially requires softness no anger, just like Confucianism or Taoism. So when I was little, my teacher told me that the skills or technique you can eventually learn and get it, but you must first bring your character up. Only then will your drawing's conception raise, and only then can you draw a Kamijina masterpiece. <laughs> Since 1989, after the June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre, the whole society in mainland China degenerated. People began to turn their attention to money. The CCP removed God from education and society, so people have no fear to do whatever bad things they want. I thought, how could people do this? These bad sentiments were also reflected in the arts. At first, I thought it was just the natural development of art, but then I came to see it clearly. So in order to search for true life and genuine art, I had to come out of China. I went to Canada first. I like drawing deities, such as Sakyamuni, Bodhisattva, and many other divine figures. Later, as society became modernized, traditional painting had limited opportunity to thrive. 
Therefore, I thought, how could I combine Chinese painting with Western painting? How could I use a modern way to express Chinese painting? This drawing is called 100 Funny Koalas. There are indeed a total of 100 koalas in the painting, and every koala has different motion and expression. After cultivating in Falun Gong, I began to realize that the arts, including Chinese painting, are passed on from gods to human beings. Even the traditional brush and ink, everything is passed on from God. So it is an extremely precious treasure. Therefore, I thought that I must go back to the traditional Chinese painting. So through cultivating and practicing Falun Gong, I came back to the traditional painting style. I once again began drawing from the meticulous creation and then little by little became more formal. Simply to say, my drawing became more traditional than before. Because of my quest for knowledge, I wanted to understand Chinese traditional culture. So I studied many types of Qigong. After I came from China, I still wanted to practice Qigong to benefit my health. At that time, my wife went back to China to visit relatives. She sent me a letter and suggested that I stop the Qigong I was practicing. She said that she would bring me back the best Qigong. When she came back to Canada, she brought me two suitcases of Falun Gong books, lecture videos and tapes, as well as some experience sharing articles. It was two suitcases full. As soon as I read the books and watched the videos, I felt so great. The content was lectures given by the teacher of Falun Gong. There were things that I have never heard of before. In other words, from the aspect of searching for knowledge and searching for the kindness of human beings and how to view my own life and to view the art, I felt that I suddenly saw the light. All of my life's questions were answered. So at that time, I was so excited. The only thing that I did all day and night was to read and study all of the Falun Gong books and watch the teacher's lecture videos. The change that took place within me was, how can I say, intoxicating. That time was my best period. My husband had practiced other Qigong before. Then his friends told him that Falun Gong has very good health benefits. My husband saw an ad in the newspaper providing information about Falun Gong's nine-day lecture series. So he went to listen to the lectures. At that time, my health was very bad. I had arthritis. The mouth was painful whenever I ate. My bones, especially the joints, had narcosis. I could not draw. Even my everyday life became difficult. Later, after watching the first day of the Falun Gong lectures, my husband came back and asked me to go with him the following day. He told me a story about a person who had trouble walking. Later, suddenly felt like he could fly after practicing Falun Gong. I thought he was joking. Originally, I thought that I would just stay at home. But then I thought, all day long I just lay in my bed, very uncomfortable. So why not go with him to Falun Gong lectures? I couldn't sit for long periods of time because my joints would become very painful. But I sat there listening to the lecture for two hours with no pain at all. In addition, I was very comfortable. After listening to the lectures, the coordinator taught us how to do the exercises for free. After practicing the exercises, my joints were so comfortable. After one month, I was very healthy. I was then able to draw again. At that time, I went back to China, just because Falun Dafa came from China and I went there to study its roots. This was 1996. Almost every morning, on every piece of grass, on every side of the street, in every square, 
there were people practicing Falun Gong. The health benefits could be clearly seen. I can give an example. After I went back to China, I attended an experience sharing conference. There was a child that was running here and there on the stage. His mother said, this child almost died. He had leukemia. They spent all of their money. They then wanted to sell the house to get more money to treat the child's illness. But just in time, the mother saw people practicing Falun Gong every morning. She asked what they were doing. The practitioner told her it was Falun Gong. Then she asked why they were practicing Falun Gong. The practitioner told her that it was good for their health. She also asked if she and her child could practice. The practitioner said, of course. So her child began to do the exercises, including the meditation. After the child practiced Falun Gong for three months, he became a very healthy child. There were many more experiences like this. There was also another person who got leukemia. His last name was Ma, and he worked in the government department at the provincial level. Neither Chinese medicine nor the Western medicine worked for him. So he began his chemotherapy treatment. The chemotherapy treatments made this person extremely skinny. His hair fell out to the point there wasn't a single hair left on his head. He then practiced Falun Gong for three months and became a very healthy and strong person. Not only that, all of his hair grew back again. Please think, how could such a person stop practicing Falun Gong? People such as this would be persecuted very badly later. The police forced him to write a guarantee that he would not practice Falun Gong. They even forced him to curse Falun Gong. He was so angry that he fainted. He said, Falun Gong saved my life. Now you police asked me to curse Falun Gong? How could that happen? In 1999, the persecution of Falun Gong began. When I heard about that, I thought, how can such a great Qigong be persecuted? The Communist Party also slandered our teacher. So I went to the Chinese consulate in Sydney to peacefully appeal. I hope the consulate could send our voice to China to ask the Chinese government not to persecute us. I went to sit there appealing every day. I sat there for five months and submitted many letters. However, they didn't accept any of our appeals. So I then thought I would go back to China directly to tell the government about my personal experiences. At the beginning of the persecution of Falun Gong, I was in China. Actually, before July 20th, the Chinese Communist Party had already begun to send out the message that they were preparing for persecution. The Guangming newspaper, a governmental-level newspaper, published some articles slandering Falun Gong. It began like that. So following the government's intimidation, there were also some signs that gave Falun Gong hardship locally. Under that condition, on the afternoon of July 19th, we drafted a letter to the Shandong Province Volunteer Coordinator. Practitioners are kind of famous in Shandong Province. The letter we drafted said, we use our effects to society and our duties to society to assure the leaders of the Chinese government that Falun Gong serves the society. We wrote a very long letter based on our personal experiences. We thought that the next morning we could send it to the leader of the state government. However, the next day before dawn, the persecution began. The Falun Gong coordinator was arrested. After I arrived in Beijing, I rented a small hotel. I saw some Australian practitioners in Tiananmen Square. They are our Western brothers. I called to the one named Sam, but I didn't know the Chinese police were observing them. After I called him, the police arrested me. They pushed me into the police van, and I was beaten badly by two or three police. Later, they sent me to the Tiananmen Square Detention Center. Falun Gong practitioners practice truth, compassion, and tolerance. We require ourselves to do everything with truth and compassion. We practice tolerance of others, will not fight with others, will not fight for personal interests. Can contradiction happen among such people? For a society, isn't this best for stability? Shouldn't a leader of a country want the best for his people and have his people have a better life? Having a society follow truth, compassion, and tolerance would be good. 
However, for the CCP, it is not like this. China is a society ruled by a dictator, not by law. Back then, many people were practicing Falun Gong, so they were trying to be better and better people. At that time, Falun Gong didn't advertise in newspapers or on TV. It just spread by word of mouth and from heart to heart. If one person felt good, then he or she would tell their family. Then that person's family would tell their relatives and friends. It spread quickly just like this. Because the CCP is a dictatorship, the things Falun Gong does cannot be understood. Falun Gong is good for both the country and its people and can help stabilize society. Falun Gong has brought to its practitioners hundreds of benefits with no harm. However, the CCP was afraid because the CCP has only 70 million members, but Falun Gong has more than 100 million members. If everyone says Falun Gong is good, who would say the CCP is good? How ridiculous the CCP's logic is. So the persecution suddenly began. In fact, there were some CCP leaders, even some high-ranking leaders, some police and military personnel all practicing Falun Gong. The CCP is just like this. Because it is a dictatorship, it doesn't matter if something is logical or not. When the higher level decides a direction, the whole country would follow. Then the police sent us into a detention center. We were often beaten there. So I wrote a poem on my t-shirt. I wrote, you can cut my head or you can beat me bloody but you cannot make me give up Falun Gong. Then I sat and did the meditation. The police officer saw me doing the meditation. He then pulled me out and put me into the male jail cell. When the Australian consular came to visit me and I told him of the persecution I received in the jail, the deputy director of the custom department of Guangzhou province asked me to stop talking. But the consular said to me, don't be afraid, please continue to talk. In order to persecute Falun Gong, the CCP created a web of lies. There was propaganda in the newspapers, radio, and on TV. Of course, we as practitioners can see these lies clearly. So we want to tell the truth to the provincial government to tell them about Falun Gong. When we decided to go there, we knew how evil the CCP would be. At the June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989, many young students were crushed by tanks and shot by guns, right? You all remember those scenes. They will do whatever they need to keep hold of their dictatorship. We wrote out a testimony and put it on the table. We then went to the provincial government together at 3 a.m. While on the way, and not having yet arrived at the government, I was arrested. I was arrested and taken to a middle school. When I got there, wow, there were already thousands of people, a lot. The Australian consular came to visit me every month. He told me that every day they were calling the Chinese government and the Chinese jail to release me. Simultaneously, several electric batons shot me and they were beating me to death. There was another electric baton that was put into my mouth, so I could not shout no matter what. As soon as I would try to shout, they would push that electric baton back into my mouth. The next day, after beating me, the jail instructor brought me in for interrogation again. The instructor charged up the electric baton in front of me. He showed me that he would use it on me soon. Before I didn't see the CCP so clearly, but now I know that I don't have any hope for it. The CCP detained me in the labor camp and sentenced me to three years. I just want to say that I want to sincerely thank the Canadian government from my heart and also thank the people's kind appeals for justice from the different countries. Every day, the Canadian government sent information to the Chinese embassy about the appeals for justice from around the world. At that time, 
not only people in Canada were doing the justice appeals, but many people from different countries were also doing so. From these efforts, we saw that the people's appeals for justice put a lot of pressure on the CCP. So the CCP had to send me back to Canada. Before releasing me, I wrote a poem on my t-shirt. After I arrived at the airport, I took off my sweater so people can see the poem on my t-shirt. Because the police were escorting me, other people may think I am a bad person. I just wanted to tell them that I was arrested only because I am a Falun Gong practitioner. After I came back to Australia, I began to sue Jiang Zemin overseas. Every day, there are Falun Gong practitioners persecuted in China, especially the CCP is doing the live organ harvesting from Falun Gong practitioners. Because China doesn't have the rule of law, I sue Jiang Zemin in the international court. We're currently before the Geneva Committee Against Torture. Uh, the importance of the case is that uh, the story of the persecution of the Falun Gong is very moving and I think it is a, uh, a story that needs to be told and in the courts is one way of doing it. But I think the uh, way in which China has treated the Falun Gong practitioners is reprehensible. I think that uh, um, it's on a par with what happened with the Jews in the Nazi era and it's important that everyone should give voice to the problem and that uh, a lot of people uh, just assume that uh, everything's going well in China and it's not necessarily the case. And I think it's very important for me at a personal level to be able to help and hold Chinese officials to account if they are guilty of torture. I think it would be marvellous if Mrs Shang was uh, an example that led to a successful outcome at the international arena and uh, her case was able to proceed and if the Committee Against Torture agreed that uh, Chinese officials should be held to account in any court and around the world, I think that would be a very important precedent. Our master told us, as practitioners, we must be good people no matter where we are. So to an artist or a sculptor, we also need to be good people. How can we become better people? One way of doing that is to use our works of art. So our master taught us our works of art should express righteous concepts, purity, compassion, and brightness. So the artists of the Jen Shanren Art Exhibition must cultivate themselves very seriously. We must be pure with no interest for money or fame. The impression Professor Zhang gave me is that he cultivates himself very seriously. As an artist, not to pursue fame or whatever is not something easily said. If done in that way, then thoughts can raise up to higher levels and then can be reflected in our works of art. Actually, to us as artists, if there were no persecution, maybe we really would be living in Xanadu. We would be just living in our own artist's world. We would be simply creating and selling our artworks. That's another lifestyle, though. As for now, we are working for other people to stop the persecution and truly save people's lives. All of these artists are Falun Gong practitioners. Through our cultivation, we really experience tremendous benefits. Cultivation has been great for health, the stabilizing of human society and civilization. We want to use our art to tell people about our personal experiences. 
This is one reason why we are doing the Jen Shunren Art Exhibition. The CCP is severely persecuting us practitioners, and most of it is being done behind closed doors. We want to reveal the truth. We are not participating in politics. If we hadn't been persecuted, we would not be participating in these truth-telling activities. Professor Zhang not only sculpted, but also jointly drafted some huge drawings with artist Xiaoping Chen. One example is the coming of the Falun Holy King, setting the cosmos in motion, tears of grief and joy, and also turning the great law wheel. Professor Zhang created many sculptures and drew many paintings, and the paintings are all huge. Yes. I have cooperated with Professor Zhang on many paintings. Most were his ideas, and I then completed them. Through this process, I have seen how huge his ideas are, and how hard he is pursuing the perfection of the art. I feel that I have benefited very much from this. Actually, this painting is also originally his idea. This topic is about the book, The Nine Commentaries on the CCP. The piece of art that I like the best is the Buddha sculpture I made. That was a change for me. I grew up under the communist environment in mainland China. My education was mandatory atheism. If anyone believed in gods or Buddhas, the CCP would call you ignorant. Your neighbors and friends would look down on you and even curse you. I lived most of my life in that environment through cultivation. I finally realized that gods and Buddhas truly exist. I made some Buddha sculptures before and respected them, but at that time I made them based only on my imagination. But now I am able to make them based on acquired realism. I have really seen and experienced how benevolent Buddhas are. I have changed my mind. I want to express my real understanding through my works of art. The tallest Buddha sculpture I am making is 12 meters high. It is an enlargement of my smaller one. I have been working on that sculpture for almost 10 years. It has taken me this much time to make it because I want to make this one perfect. Even the small Buddha I made took me two or three years. Both take such a long time because it is a process of continued scrutiny. I could finish it very quickly, but I want to make this sculpture a perfect work of art. To really express my understandings, it takes time. Of course I will go back to China someday in the future. The CCP may destroy itself very soon. After I go back to China, the first thing I want to do is erect my tallest Buddha. I've been searching all my life, searching for the truth, searching for the answers that will set me free. That will set me free It's been a long, long journey It's been a long, long time I've been everywhere 
searching for a righteous way, searching for a righteous way, searching for a righteous way. Cause I want to go home. I want to go home back to my true, true self. Back to where I came from, back to myself. Jen Chong Ren, Jen Chong Ren, Jen Chong Ren will set you free, set you free, set you free, set you free.